So the inning ends, and every, whenever the inning ends, Leland goes right down, crush, couple, crushes his cheaters. You know, he's got two. You know, if he can get two in, it's a great inning. If, but usually one now. The, the pitch clock now would kill him with two and a half seconds in between innings. He, he needed at least four to get two heaters in. Coming in hot, Chichi. What's going on, brother? Dude, coming in super hot. I don't even know where to begin here. We've been sitting here for 10 minutes going, we got to talk about this and <laughs> any other thing. So you, you got your list there. Why don't you rip through? Dude, I, I mean, I didn't realize this list. I mean, like, I feel like yesterday was a big day in baseball, dude. Like when you go down. So let's just rip through like a lot of stuff happening. First off, on the on the show, hey, ticker, what do we got? 44 home runs and 46 bags. So let's just throw that out there. The first thing. Second thing is, dude, which anytime, you know, nowadays these no hitters are so weird because a lot of times guys aren't going nine innings. But Imanaga went seven frames, no hits. And then the Cubs, you know, they ended up finishing off that no hitter. It's the first no hitter at Wrigley since 1972. They know it and they, and they no hit the Pirates last night. So, I mean, I think that's a pretty big deal, man. You no hit a team. You know what I mean? At at any at any point, but especially the fact that it hasn't been done in over fifty years at Wrigley, and that's huge for the Cubs because the Cubs are playing good baseball. They won twelve nothing last night, dude. Yeah. They s- slapped around the Buckos. But you know, you go and look at it. What Pearson threw an inning, Hodge threw an inning, and Imanaga threw seven innings, two walks, seven Ks. Yeah, this is pretty gotta, pretty impressive. Yeah, and you got to give them credit. They're four and a half games out of the wild card. Like, yeah. And before the season, everybody's like, Cubs didn't do anything. Cubs are going to be horrible. Well, guess what? The Cubs are there. They're there. They're not gone. Yeah. Yet. It's not over for them, right? No, they're doing well. And, dude, they're, they're, they're swinging the bats. I mean, you go last night, Bellinger two for four, Suzuki two for four, Hap two for four, uh, Horner three for four. Swanson three for five, Crow Armstrong three for four. I mean, they put up seventeen hits last night, dude. Yeah, you know, so Crow Armstrong's Pete Crow Armstrong's playing a lot better, dude. Hitting two forty now, almost a seven hundred OPS, playing an elite defense. They got some players, man. They got some Imanaga. They got Justin Steele. They got some pitching. So the Cubs aren't done yet, man. There's a month to go. They're gonna have it. They're definitely gonna have a a say in this whole thing. You know, there's no doubt about that. Um. Uh, on another note, too, Matt Chapman, six-year, $151 million extension for the Giants. Nice piece right there. Yeah. The Giants have lost so many guys over the years, Judge being the big one a couple years ago. But, you know, for Chapman to get that six-year deal, that's a nice – he's been a nice piece for them. He swung the bat well. You know, he's played good defense, so that's that's nice. Let's go back to your Mets or not, you know, your your household Mets. You like the Yankees, Jess works for the Mets. You have obviously a Mets fan too, but dude, Winker with the big grand slam. They've won seven in a row. And uh they're a half, still a half game back of the Braves because the Braves are still, you know, holding serve. Braves have two pitchers. Braves have two pitchers that are carrying them. I mean, carrying them at the top of that rotation. It's amazing how they keep going. They're so neck and neck, the Braves and and the Mets, which is the way it should be in that division because it's really cool when it, that rivalry is going good. Um, shoot, Chipper Jones's kid's name Shay. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's so funny. Um, stay in um, it, dude. Oh, good. What were you gonna say? Well, I was gonna say in that race though, the Padres are staying right there too, bro. I mean, the Padres are Tatis. I don't, dude. Did I read that wrong to say that's Tatis's first walk-off hit? I can't be right, right? Uh, that's a good question. I read something that said that, but you know, Tatis is back in the mix now. Yeah, which is huge for that offense. But dude, sometimes you know, you look at their record without Tatis, and they were like the best team in baseball without him. You, know, <laughs> you, you wonder sometimes, Mojo's real. Like, is it good? Is it good? Not good. Time will tell if it's good to have Tatis back. And what that means, but obviously it was good last night. They got a big win against the Tigers. Tatis with a walk-off single. Jackson Merrill right in the thick of it again with a big three-run homer. Yep. For his uh, dude, he's 20, so good. 
Jack Samaro yeah. is so good at baseball. He is he's he's so a really good baseball player. Yeah. Really and, good. By the way, amazing call by uh uh I'm forgetting his name. He was a Red Sox announcer and now he's with the Pod. Oh, Don Orsillo, dude. dude. How good is he? How good Don is Don is the best. He kind of got screwed out there in Boston mm-hmm. for whatever reason, but all those years it was Jerry Rimmer and Don Orsillo. Don's the greatest guy. He loves baseball and he is a, a, a He's a sheer joy to listen to out there in San Diego. They got a gem. Yeah, they definitely got a gem there. And, hey, flipping it over to the AL, dude, we got to talk Orioles and their shortstop, dude. First of all, they are in first place again ahead of the Yankees, which if you live in New York, by the way, it's like the Yankees are 10 games under. <laughs> and, and they should trade everybody, and Brian Cashman should be fired. I, it's Dude, dude I, I, the, the questions that Booty answers after every loss must be like, it must be sickening. Like, to have to answer the same stuff. Like, you play 162 games. Right. They are they're one of the – they might be the best team in baseball, literally. They might be the best team in baseball. But if they lose, like, two in a row, the sky's falling in New York, dude. They're like, hey, I'm get rid of – send Volpe down, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Verdugo, where's Dominguez? Uh, oh, know, where's like, Dominguez? Oh, my God. If I hear that one more time, holy moly, be there one day. <laughs> and yeah. Boogie's got to answer that question every single day. Like, every single every, day. Dude, every day. Yeah, but on a lighter note, dude, the Orioles, let's give them props for what they're doing, what they've done the last couple of years. And, dude, their shortstop is doing – they've had some great shortstops. You have a list there of the great shortstops, and he's yeah. done some things that none of them have ever done before. No, it's incredible. And to think Cal has never hit 35 home runs, I mean, I think that's that's uh, that's definitely one that, 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 that shocked me. But, yeah, they've had so many great – Shortstops, Miguel Tejada, Cal Ripken Jr., J.J. Hardy, um, and, you know, just some great players. So to see Gunnar Henderson, as young as he is, hitting his 35th home or doing something that, that a shortstop has never done in oral history, which is a huge, you know, which is a, a you know, a huge history uh, in that club. So, yeah, I, I thought that was that was awesome. And what a year he's having, dude. I mean, Gunnar Henderson's the real deal. Big time, oh, real deal, real so deal. That least, team is the yeah. real deal, man. I, I mean, you, you know, you go back to it, dude. Do you want? Do you want that division, or do you want? I know the wild card I, team, I, dude. I, I mean, my opinion again. I want the wild card. That's if bad. my team's good enough to, to win that first round, which you probably will be, especially if you're a team like the Yankees or the O's. I actually feel like whoever wins that wild card is going to win that. Yeah. What's amazing too? Second to last series of the year. Orioles at Yankees, dude. Oh, wow. And then the Yankees have Pittsburgh. They go to the Pirates, I know. Which, that's not a fun thing to do, especially if, if those the kids are still you, catching by them. I'm sure cool. they will be, too. Yeah. You, you go. And, and, dude, when you're a team that's out of it, too, you want to have a say in the race. Like You mm-hmm. actually want to be like, you know what? We had a say in the race at the end. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I, I think if you're the Pirates, you want to still be pitching Skeens and Jones is back and Keller. You know, you want to have that, you want to affect the race, you know? Yeah. Did any of those Reds teams you played on, did you guys spoil anybody during that stretch? Are you kidding me, bro? Was it one of the greatest, one of the greatest stories ever was when, was when we spoiled the Cubs at the end of 2004. And, uh, you know, I'll tell the quick version, but we spoil the Cubs. We take three out of four, knock them out of the wild card places, you know, in, in, in Chicago, every time you come out, the, you know, they're always like, you guys suck, you know, the Reds, you know, and, you know, they, they they had some great teams back then, and they took it to us, but we took it three out of four from them, knocked them out of the postseason, and, uh, you know, we it was getaway day, and we're all in our suits, you know, and it's like a party on the bus, we're having some beers, and we're like, yeah, we, we you know, we beat the Cubs, and, uh, you know, we're coming down, and, dude, we're, we're, I, think, I think we get, like, five blocks down and Wrigley p- packed, you know, every bar is still packed because it's a day game. It's a Thursday. We're going home. We're kind of fired up. We have one more series, three more games to go. And uh, that's when I, dude, I was like, I told the bus driver, hey, man, open the door. He's like, what do you mean we're moving? I go, dude, we're in traffic. We're in Wrigleyville at 5 o'clock. It's not moving. So he opens up the door. I run out into this bar, dude, and I run out to the middle of the bar, and I'm like, hey. And, like, the record stops. Everyone's, like, depressed. You know, they're eating chicken wings. The, the beer's warm. You know what I mean? And I yell, hey, and everyone just kind of looks at me, and I go, oh, you Cub fans, like they say in Chicago, better luck next season. You just got your butt whipped by the Cincinnati Reds. Bro, I'd never seen fans turn on me as fast as they could. I start running out to the bus drive. I'm like, open the door, dude, open the door. 
people come 20 to 30 people are chasing me out of the bar actually i think they thought it was a terrorist attack or something <laughs> but it was really me coming out to tell them the Cincinnati Reds just kicked their butts. I go flying onto this bus, dude, jump on, literally, door shuts, seen from a movie. People start pounding on the bus, and they're like, come on out here. Was that Sean Casey? And I'm like, I'm not coming back. Yeah, it was Sean Casey, but I'm not coming back. I get on the bus, dude. It was like the ultimate, every, Adam Dunn, Griffey, Lark, you know, Kearns, LaRue, they're all lined up on the window, pounding on the windows. These people are pounding on the door. And we're like, yeah, we just took you guys down. You know, we're out of the playoffs and so are you. Oh my and we're fired. This was our playoffs. So, yeah, dude, do I have a story? That's why. And like the greatest part of the story was at the end, Barry Larkin grabs me. He's like, dude, he's like, I'm sitting next to him in the front. He goes, Casey goes, I've been in the game 19 years and I've seen a lot of things. He goes, I ain't. That's the, one, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> what would modern day Sean Casey say to that Sean Casey today? <laughs> I don't think modern day Sean would Casey say, would say, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Oh, my alarm's going off. Um, that's so good, dude. Uh, what else we got going? Dude, scary moment also for the uh, for the Phillies. Bryce Harper took a sh- – man, we're talking about guys getting hit by pitches. He took one right off the elbow. Oh, my dude, goodness. Scary dude, I, bro, I'll tell you what. You know, we talk about that, you know, and before that, dude, we talk about Schwarber. Schwarber's on fire. The Phillies are on fire. Another leadoff home run, setting records. I mean, he's, he's, that team is just fully loaded. But when I saw Bryce Harper, dude, get hit in that back elbow with like a cutter or it just chased him. Dude, it brought back some incredibly bad memories for me. I remember in 07, I'm with the, with the Tigers. We're facing Gavin Floyd for the White Sox, throwing like 95, 96 miles an hour. Throws me like a 95-mile-an-hour cutter, and I'm in, in the box, and the ball is just heat-seeking me, bro. I can't get out of the way. I'm like, is this ball turning like the like the Matrix or something? I'm turning, turning, turning. It keeps cutting. Bam, it hits me in the back elbow. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I can't move, Chich. I go down, bro. I'm like, I'm literally numb in the box. I'm just. And all of a sudden, Leland comes out. He's like, hey, you all right? You all right? Can you go? Can you go? Can you go? And I'm like, no. I was like, I mean, meanwhile, I'm so, at this point, I'm so nervous of Jim Leland. I'm like, I can go. I'm not telling Jim Leland I'd come out of the game. I'm like, I can't feel any part of my body. I'm literally in a, in a uh, my body is electric, electrocuted. I'm like, oh, you know, because I hit right in the funny bone, dude. It's electrocuted my body. So I'm like, all right, run down to first. So I'm running down to first chance. I think I'm just going to eat it. Like, I'm like, I'm about to go down. I'm going to know. So I, I get the first somehow. There's one out in the inning. I'm like, okay, in the next two outs, my body's going to come back. My elbow's going to come back. You know, elbow is on fire, dude. Like, oh. I mean, like electrocuted, right? So inning ends, and I'm like, oh, my God. N- my elbow's still on fire. Left side of my body's numb. So I'm like, oh, my God. I guess like, I can't, I can't go back out there. Right? I, I, I can't go back out there. I just told Lila I'm good. So the inning ends, and every, whenever the inning ends, Leland goes right down, crushes a couple, crushes his cheaters. You know, he's got two. You know, if he can get two in, it's a great inning. If, but usually one now. The, the pitch clock now would kill him with two and a half seconds to be doing innings. He, he needed at least four to get two heaters in. But he's down there, head down, just ready to reel. So I go to I go to Gene Lamont. I'm like, Gino, I was like, I, I don't think I can go back out there. I was like, I, I can't lift. It's my glove hand. I was like, I'll take one right in the kisser. I can't move my arm. He's like, all right, go tell, go tell Skip you got to come out of the game. I was like, you go tell Skip. I was like, I'm not going down there. So, so like I said, I'm in Bryce Harper's elbow, same elbow. I go, I, I'm like, he's like, you got to do it, Case. You got to go tell him. So I'm like, oh my god. So I go down there. I'm like, I'm like, uh, you know, see him crushing the heater. And I and I always tell the story with like, it's like going up to a pit bull that you just gave a, a wagyu ribeye to, Australian ribeye. You're like, here you go, bro. Here's that Australian ribeye. And then you go try and take the ribeye from him or interrupt him. Dude, your freaking legs get chomped off, right? So I, I see Leland just ripping these Marlboros, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm so nervous right now. I start sweating profusely. I'm like begging my arm to come back, and I go up to him like, skip, skip. He doesn't even respond. First two skips, doesn't even respond. I'm like, skip. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like I startled him, right? I'm like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, hey. I'm like, I, I know I told you I was okay, but I'm not okay. I was like, I can't feel the left side of my body. Can't lift my arm. He's like, oh, God. yeah. He's like, all right, now tell, uh, tell Gino to put Marcus Timms in there, in there first. He's like, go upstairs and ice your elbow. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, all right. So I start walking out. He's like, one more thing. He's like, never bother me again when I'm crushing the heater. I'm like, I won't. Never. Note taken. So. <laughs> so good. So when I saw Bryce Harper, it made me think of that story with Leland, man. Taking oh, it right in the God. back elbow. In the back elbow. <sighs> 
you probably had seams there was not, nothing worse than when you get hit hard and you got the seams the next day on your- oh dude yo yo i'd see the big time seams dude big time uh, seams ah well glad you're not doing that anymore that's why you get out of the box man you yeah. modern day sean casey we don't, <laughs> we don't do these things anymore exactly. We're getting to the- Exactly. Nice, dude. Oh uh, my god. Oh, everybody get ready. Watch your baseball games. I know football season's starting, dude. You're gonna see yeah. Taylor Swift at uh Chiefs games, I'm told, but don't oh, forget yeah. about baseball right now. Everybody go watch tonight. There's so much good, there's so much stuff happening. And Yankee fans, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna win the division. If you don't win the division, you'll win the wild card and you'll win the World Series. Okay. It's good. I think it's gonna happen. So let's let's uh let's everything's gonna be okay. And uh, like I, like you said, Chinch, San Diego, Arizona, Atlanta, uh, the Mets a half game out, and Boston is back to five hundred. Not good, seventy and seventy. They've really kind of hit a skid here. So we we'll go. see what we'll see what happens, brother. Hey, right. listen, man, great being on with you today. Love you tons. Have a great rest of your day. What are you doing rest of the day, bro? Um, actually, just cleaning up. I'm starting to close up the backyard. Oh, close up the pool. I know it's depressing when 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 the resort Chinchamino gets closed up. <laughs> there you Not go. a good thing for anybody. Not at all. Anyway, all right. all right, man. All right. Well, good luck closing it up, everyone out there. Thanks for listening. Don't forget subscribe, download, tell you tell some of your friends about what we're doing here at the mayor's office. All right, man. I'll see you tomorrow, brother.